Hey everyone, my name is Gage Co, and I am an OVA 8th grader. To celebrate Black History Month, I would like to honor NASA legend Guion Bluford. Guion Stuart Bluford Jr. was born November 22nd, 1942, and is an American aerospace engineer. He retired the U.S. Air Force as a colonel, fighter pilot, and former NASA astronaut, who is also the first African American to go to space. Before becoming an astronaut, he was an officer in the U.S. Air Force, where he remained until being assigned to NASA years later, during that time rising to the rank of colonel. He participated in four space shuttle flights between 1983 and 1992. In 1983, as a member of the crew, orbiter, and challenger on the mission STS-8, he became the very first African American in space that very mission. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you guys have an amazing Black History Month. Bye. For Black History Month, I'd like to give light to Albert Wheeler. Originally from Missouri, Wheeler arrived in Ann Arbor, Michigan in 1937 to pursue a PhD at the University of Michigan. He faced extreme racism and discrimination and insults, including a time that he was assigned to grade papers instead of being allowed to enter the lab where white students were allowed to work and teach. The time it took him to move up in this program was also much more delayed than his fellow white classmates, but he never gave up. He eventually became the first African-American to hold tenure track faculty position at the University of Michigan. During nearly his 30 years on faculty, Wheeler also worked to diversify the staff and student body at the U of M Medical School. So yesterday's challenges are unfortunately today's reality. Wheeler died in 1994, but if he was alive today, he'd likely be troubled by the statistics that show that just 5% of doctors in the USA today are Black. And Black medical students and physicians are still facing bias and racism today. I thought it would be great to not only highlight the efforts of the professor, but also to shed light that this is still a problem today. And we can fight this by encouraging and helping people of color not only pursue areas in the medical field, but also help them thrive as we want for everyone. Thank you. Hi, Karen Herrick, secondary mentor teacher. I would like to talk about Katherine Johnson. As she was one of the first women of color that NASA had ever hired, and she had worked with um, her calculations, helped with several space missions, including the first moon landing. She was really good um, with her numbers, even at a young age. You may have seen the information about her life in the recent movie called Hidden Figures. It's really good, I recommend you check it out. Um, she was so good at her numbers that it said that the Apollo 11 mission, the mission to the moon, that John Glenn refused to leave until Miss Johnson double checked what the computer said. He wanted to make sure he made it there and back safely. In 2015, she was rewarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is America's highest uh, civilian honor. She was quite a woman uh, and quite a trailblazer. Hi, my name is Emma, and for Black History Month, I'll be talking about Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was um, an African-American activist in the civil rights movement, best known for her provincial role in the Montgomery bus. The United States Congress has honored her as the first lady of the civil rights and the mother of the freedom movement. She was born February 4th, 1913 and died October 24th, 2004. Hi, I'm Mrs. Martin and I teach English at OBA and the important African-American person of history that I would like to highlight is Ruby Bridges. Um, so Ruby Bridges became um, very well known for advancing the civil rights movement in 1960 um, because she lived in New Orleans, um, which is obviously in the South, and um, school was still segregated down there. And she was the first um, African-American student and child to um, help towards desegregating the schools in the South, which was huge. Um, so she, um, there are a couple blocks from her house, there was an all white school and um, she walked to school every day with her mother and federal marshals as people protested um, her being there simply for the color of her skin. And she went to school um, at an all white school. And I think that um, not only is that so powerful and so brave, but I think in our um, community and in our educational world, um, we see her bravery every day. So that is who I decided to highlight. 
Hi, Gar Willoughby here. The person I would like to share for Black History Month is Ida B. Wells Barnett. And uh, Miss Greenspan got me this shirt and I will forever be thankful. But Ida B. is special to me um, in many ways. Um, she grew up in the 19th century, right after the Civil War. Her parents passed away from typhoid fever. Instead of splitting the family up, she raised all of them practically on her own. And then she went on to become a journalist and she had a newspaper in Memphis and she documented all the terrible things that were going on uh, during the reconstruction era. She was a lightning rod, she was independent, she was a feminist before feminism. Uh, she was a civil rights leader before civil rights and she was one of the founders of the NAACP. And I just think it's a remarkable person and if you get a chance, um, research Ida B a little bit more, and uh, she's a true American hero. All right, thanks. practicing one of my favorite songs, Freight Train. Freight Train is really cool because it was written by this amazing lady named Elizabeth Cotton. Elizabeth Cotton was born in the late 1800s. And what is really cool about her is that she completely taught herself how to play the guitar. She wrote that song at the age of about 11. And here's the icing on the cake. She was left-handed. So she taught herself how to play the guitar with the guitar upside down. She is a great reminder that if you work hard enough at anything, you can do it. So I love her. She's just an inspiration to me. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. It began as a way of remembering important people and events in the history of African diaspora. Some of you may know or not know, but diaspora means the dispersion of Jews among the Gentiles. So this is and importance of Black History Month. Hi there, my Mrs. Green. I want to share the story of Doris Miller. Um, you definitely have to take some time to, to read more about him. He's an amazing individual. He, in 1941, served the Navy, um, but he was only allowed to serve because of segregation and racial discrimination. He was only allowed to serve as a messman, and um, which essentially meant he took care of the officers. In 1941, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, he worked endlessly to save the lives of um, many of the crewmen on the ship. And at one point he took over a machine gun and shot down Japanese planes, which was technically illegal at the time. Um, at the time, all that was really stated was that a black man um, did these things. That's all that was released by the Navy. And uh, through pressure, um, the Navy um, did eventually credit Doris Miller for his efforts on that day and the lives that he saved. Now there is a supercarrier called the USS Doris Miller, which is fantastic. And his story is um, really being shared. And I wanted to share this quote with you because I just thought it was really a great quote from an NPR article. It says, despite the fact that he was denied certain basic constitutional rights because of the racism in our society at the time, Dory didn't let that deter him. It didn't lessen his patriotism, his love for country, his determination to serve and to give the Navy his very best. And that says a lot, that says a lot. Happy Black History Month. The person I'm going to highlight today is Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker is a completely 100% self-taught astronomer and mathematician. He paved the way for many of the mathematics ideas we have today and was able to come up with predictions of solar and lunar eclipses. Uh, Benjamin Banneker is most well known for creating a wooden clock that struck once every hour for 24 hours. He's definitely paved the way for the astronomy and mathematics world today. Thanks, Benjamin Banneker. Hi, I'm Mrs. Sloan, and one of the things that I used to do in my past life was teach English. Now, if you know me, I was not a person who really read in high school, and reading um, certain genres was not up my alley in any way, shape, or form. 
But when I came across a book that I was um, slated to teach, it was called A Raisin in the Sun. And it's a play by Lorraine Hansberry, Hansberry sorry. And she wrote this phenomenal play um, that has really stand at the test of time, if you will. Um, it's called A Raisin in the Sun. And um, she got that title from Langston Hughes, who uh, was a Harlem Renaissance poet, wrote. And the poem, every time I hear it and every time I read it, I get something different. And I think that that's really um, magical. And um, Langston Hughes was so talented in so many things. And 